Using a mortar and pestle to make sauces is one of the most ancient cooking techniques around, but it's still completely relevant today because it makes absolutely amazing, flavorful, velvety smooth sauces like this aioli. When it's the beginning of the summer and garlic is fresh at the farmer's market, I throw in quite a bit more. But in the winter, when the garlic is cured, it's a little bit older, the flavor is much more potent, so I only use two cloves then. These are two big cloves, so it's gonna be pretty potent, but I love the flavor of garlic and that's what this sauce is all about. To make the work easier with the pestle, I'm gonna add some medium grind sea salt. So there's quite a bit of texture to the salt and it allows the friction with the garlic and the pestle to do its thing. So in the beginning, it's all about pulverizing the garlic with a pounding motion. Because that's pretty intense, I put the mortar on the edge of my workstation because the leg kind of helps to support it. Once the garlic has released some of its juices and it's kind of liquidy, I start grinding it with a circular motion, pressing the pestle against the wall of the mortar. The pestle is your only tool here. So you're using it as a spoon, as something to pound with, it works to get all the garlic off of the edges of the mortar as you're pounding. So now that the garlic's in a really nice fine paste, I'm gonna add the next ingredient, which is just one egg yolk. So it takes about one to two minutes to completely combine the egg yolk and the garlic. You are looking for a slightly lighter color tone. The word aioli actually literally means garlic oil. So now is the really important part. We're combining the garlic with the oil. The egg is acting as the emulsifier. So one egg can emulsify one cup of extra virgin olive oil. The squeeze bottle is going to be your best friend in this recipe. It'll allow you to add the oil drop by drop from the tiny little nozzle. So this process is gonna take about 10 minutes total. At the beginning, I'm dropping in the oil little by little. But once the emulsion is formed and I see that the sauce is starting to thicken, I can add it much quicker. So use the pestle every once in a while to kind of scoop down the sides, bring all of the bulk of the aioli to the bottom so it's easier to stir and you're really emulsifying it all together. If you stop turning the pestle at all, you could definitely break the aioli pretty easily. A broken aioli just kind of looks like an oily sauce. We definitely want to avoid that. We're looking for something that looks almost the color and texture of lemon curd. It really helps if you're ambidextrous. I sometimes will switch arms midway, start working with my left arm. The aioli now is really thick and it's really crackly. Can you hear that? So at this point I'm gonna splash in just a little bit of water, possibly half teaspoon. That's gonna thin it out to just the point where it's easy to stir again. Take a spoon and scrape down the edges every once in a while. So now that I have a really good mass of aioli in the mortar, I can start adding the oil in a much thicker stream. It may freak you out, you might think that it's breaking because you see the oil kind of separate, but just keep stirring, it'll come together. So look at how beautiful this sauce is. It's delicious for dipping all sorts of veggies. It's really the perfect sauce for any summer meal. The mortar is so beautiful that I just serve the aioli directly from it. And I'm gonna put it on this beautiful big wood platter and build out my little smorgasbord of all the delicious veggies and eggs and bread that I'm going to serve it with. So it's really fun to go to your farmer's market to collect all this produce to put on a platter to serve with the aioli. Basically, if it tastes good with garlic and oil, it'll taste good with aioli. I really love a mixture of raw and cooked vegetables. It just gives a difference in texture and it just keeps it really interesting. Eggs that are nice and jammy, I love just tearing them open with my hands. They have a beautiful, rustic, kind of chunky look to them. So I'm just gonna tuck this in here and there just for decoration, smells yummy. So finishing touch, a little bit of fresh ground pepper, especially on the eggs, but you can kind of get it all over the platter if you want. So the classic and obvious pairing with aioli is Provencal Rosé. The two go hand in hand. All that garlicky flavor is perfectly balanced by the fresh flavor of a really nice Provencal Rosé. So let's try it. Wow, so good. 
So I hope this has inspired you to get out your mortar and pestle if you hadn't used it in a while and make yourself aioli. Invite a bunch of friends over, everyone will have garlic breath, but there will be plenty of rosé to wash it down.